Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So, this week's match, I used the brand new, super powerful yellow for BT4. This thing is, this thing is devastating. This, it's got control like nobody's business, as well as some really good punching power in the process. This is going to be a formidable deck for sure. I see why everyone's wanting to flock to it. Like, I'd say at least 60% of the player base is wanting to go to this deck. And that leaves the other 40% for all the other colors. So when over half your player base is going to one color, there's a pretty good reason for it. It's really powerful. Now there is several ways to build this deck, but this is mine. This is the one I've been playtesting and really liking. So uh, let's get into this. Also, don't forget this month's memory counter is the Upamon. So uh, if you're going to be playing yellow, or even if you're playing blue, you're going to want to get an Upamon counter for all the Upamon that you're going to be playing, right? Because Upamon's like the best way to go for draw power, and, uh, and this thing is super adorable. It also glows in the dark. Very, very adorable. So that's our Patreon reward for this month, uh, made by my wife. Uh, also, I do want to shout out our Patreons this month. Uh, Tristan, you are awesome, phenomenal. Uh, gets every memory marker we've made so far. He, he has all of them. So he is a dedicated fan. Uh, thank you, Tristan. I appreciate you so much. Also, Tricky Z, I know you are on the Dragon Village side. But hey, I appreciate you too. And I'll shout you out over there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this here. Uh, starting off the bat, Upamon. Just like we were talking about, Upamon is uh, our four babies for this one. I only went with four over five. One, I really like the consistency. Two, I don't really like any of the other eggs that much with this like version of yellow. This version of yellow is fast. It's a very fast paced deck, uh, unlike yellow of yesteryear, right? Where it was a lot more slow and control and, and you know, in that kind of play style. This is a lot more fast. Also, you can get down to three security in this deck super easily okay well there's lots of ways to do it and uh so getting this upamon triggered super early in the game like turn one even turn two is very well maybe not turn one but turn two for sure um it's just a great card Dr drawing is always good if you can have a good draw engine in your deck that's a lot of power right there in itself that's one of the things that made 1.0 blue so good is because it's drawing was a lot better than everyone else's uh, now we've got lots of other ways in decks to draw so it's not like its main thing anymore right uh, so just having draw power consistent draw power is very important this deck reduces your security a lot uh, it can get it back with like the salamon there that you can see um, but it can get down pretty fast, pretty easily. So Upamon is going to be way more alive than like having five or more. Okay, uh, that one is good for turn one, but you can't guarantee a one of out of five to be that one that's going to trigger if you have five or more security. It's just unlikely. Uh, so I'd rather just have the consistency of always getting the Upamon. Also, like I said, it's so fast that your match is going to be done before you use all your eggs in this deck, more than likely. All right, jumping over next, we have the Salamon here, I and mean, this is uh, zero cost. Four play cost is a bit much, but it's so worth it. Uh, on deletion, if you have three or fewer security, trigger recovery plus one. Uh, it works on both turns, which is is pretty important because there's a lot of stuff out there that only works on like your own turn. So for this to work on either turn is really good. So say it swings into security and survives by some miracle. If your opponent chooses to swing over this on their turn, you're going to get that recovery, and that's really nice. Recovery is just so good. This not even isn't even really a blocker per se, but just having it on field will honestly deter your opponent from swinging in and reducing you down into three because they know you're about to just get a free check into their security and get that security back that they just cleared. So uh, it's just a nice deterrent having it there. Also great, just comeback card, phenomenal. Four of for sure because you can play it early game just to stall your opponent out because they're not going to waste or late game to save yourself. It has tons and tons of value. Uh, next up, we got the Patamon. This is uh, the starter deck Patamon. I love this thing. I think it's so underrated. So underrated. I don't know why people hate on it. Uh, but your turn, once per turn, when an opponent's Digimon is deleted by dropping to zero DP, gain one memory. This deck, uh, BT4 Yellow, loves reducing DP. That's how it clears it. It's like kind of like Shine, where Shine would only do it, you know, you could do it four times with Shine, right? You, you can only play four Shines, so you can only drop Shine four times. Uh, but it required all this setup, and it was really slow, and you only ever got to drop, you know, that shine a couple times, so you'd only ever trigger this Patamon a couple times. 
but in BT4 yellow, you're killing something almost every single turn by reducing them to zero DP. So this Patamon is gonna get so much value. You have multiple Patamons on field, oh my God, you're just gonna get so much free memory, it's gonna be ridiculous. Uh, I've literally had this Patamon come up several times. Uh, go into War Graymon or War Graumon on top of this guy, uh, Digiburst with that and uh, kill something, leave the Patamon, so you, you Digiburst the four and the, and the baby away, leave the rookie, the Patamon, and now you're triggering that Patamon's ability. Uh, I've been stuck at five memory before, Digivolved three to go into the War Graumon, killed something, got that memory back, now I'm back at three, then I go into a War Greymon for three, and now I'm going to, you know, going to town on just attacking and killing more stuff. Yeah, just it sets up plays for sure. He is a playmaker 100%. Next up is the promo Pulsemon. This is the pre-release Pulsemon. I don't even want to begin to imagine what the price tag on this guy is going to be. He's only available as a promo, but oh my god, he's so good. Uh, on play, if you have three or more security, draw one. Okay, three or more. That's, that's pretty important. So uh, you can recovery three and get yourself over that. Well, you know, Salomon, whatever. And, uh, and you're going to get that draw. Three cost play for a draw. That's pretty standard. I mean, looking at Gabumon, Gabumon was a 1K also, mind you. And uh, he's a 2K. Not, not that that necessarily matters that much. But still, it's something. And, uh, and you get that draw. So he's great early game. Early game, he's phenomenal. Uh, and then if you have three or fewer security cards, gain one memory. Three or fewer. Do you see that? If you're right at three, you get both of these. You get the draw one and the memory back. So it essentially makes him a play cost two. If you can play him for free, because there's lots of ways to play for free. Well, not not lots, not yet. Uh, we've got one in here, the the Angelomon that lets you play a, a rookie for free, as well as next set, we get Lord Nightmon or Chaosmon, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, that lets you play rookies for free, and uh, that's just that's gonna be busted. But here in the now, Angelomon combos right with this. But just having it in general, he's just a great rookie just on, by itself, even without having cheeky ways to get him out for free. He's just still super valuable. Uh, incredible card. Um, so that's 12 rookies already and no vanillas. And I hate to tell you this, but we don't have any vanillas in this deck. Yeah, I originally did, but then I, I dropped the vanillas for the Pulse Mon because Pulse Mon was just too valuable. I had four four vanillas, but I was like, nah, Pulse Mon for sure putting him in over over the vanillas just because all these see so much value okay uh but speaking of value though i'll go to the end i actually kind of forgot to put him in there in the next slot uh but bushi agumon right this thing is a literal game winner uh if you saw the video from yesterday by the time this video comes up uh this thing literally wins me the game literally wins me the game uh swinging in with the war Greymon to clear two security Angelomon level 5 lets me play the, the Bushi Agumon for free and then he has Rush when it comes in and so I swing for game. So playing, yet yeah, 5 cost is stupid, okay? 5 cost on a rookie is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't. Unless I'm playing something crazy like against, um, I don't know, Mega Zoo and they're going to give me a lot of memory. You know, punish, punish Mega Zoo for giving all that memory with the Bushi Agumon, sure. Um, but most situations, you're not going to get the rush because you don't have enough memory. But playing it for free, you sure as heck do. That's why I've only got it at the two of here. Mainly because I want to see it once in the game, right? But I don't need to see it multiple times because he's probably going to be like pushing for game sort of card. And I'm only ever going to get a comboed off and perfectly with the Angelomon. So I need to see one of them. And then when I get the Angelomon play ready then I can utilize it. So that's why I wanted to keep it at such a low count, just because I, I don't need to see it that often. All right, going into our level fours now. All right, we got Unimon here. Just, I mean, a two Digivolve blocker is, you know, blockers are great. We, we see the value of blockers. They're they're wonderful. Uh, purple Rookie Rush kind of might be a thing. We, we might have to wait and see on that one. Rook, regular Rookie Rush is still a thing. you got Blue Green Rookie Rush, and there's like new forms of Rookie Rush coming. Yeah, wait for those, because that's more to deal with, more Rookie Rush variants. Uh, but blockers just shut all of it down. So now that we can have a second blocker here with uh, Pitomon, or Pitomon, however you want to call him, uh, one Digivolve for a blocker is outstanding. Uh, he is 1k less, 
which overall isn't too big a deal either. My thought process with blockers is you're either going to block something huge, right, um, and and stop it, which you already intend to die, or you're just blocking a blocker. I mean, or you're just blocking a rookie. You're not blocking. No one's swinging in with their level fours and level fives typically. Mostly their level fours, which is where this difference is going to come in. No one's going to be swinging with level fours um, all that much, unless it's like rookie rush. But even then, you're you've got these guys for the rookie rush matchup. They're going to get their value against rookie rush. Um, so yeah, there's. The 1k difference does not make a big deal. The the one Digivolve though does make a big deal. One, he's just great for a stair stepper because next up we got the Terurimon here, which is our one k our one cost uh, level four Digivolve. One cost level fours are great. Okay, if you're playing if you're a green player, you know the value of a one cost Digimon. It's just really really nice to have. Um, so now being able to double that, so no more is it first turn you're like oh man I really need to get a blocker out. Oh but I've got my one cost. Uh, Digivolve level four, which one do I go with? Now, your answer is solved. Both in one. It's perfect. Uh, perfect op opening turn right here is a, a, a one cost evolution uh, blocker. The perfect opening turn one play. And the true Mon we already covered, just the one cost evolution is great, great for stair stepping. Uh, you can play this and then go into a War Ground Mon like right here, and then get your Digi Burst off with the War Ground Mon because it's not as much memory. Uh, it's it's great. War Groundmon is phenomenal. Okay, this is like one of the best cards to come out of BT4. Uh, Digiburst two, so you uh, either a rookie and a level four, or a level four and like a a baby, you know, whatever the combination, whatever you need right there, absolutely great. And then one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus four thousand DP for the turn. One. This is a great rookie killer by itself, already really good, but also in combination, you go with a Slash Angemon on top of this, and I mean, you're killing big things at that point. 12K, you're killing 12K, so pretty much almost all level sixes, you're killing all of them with that combo. Really, really nice stuff, honestly. I love the, the War Grandmon. I've seen some, I've done some great plays with it. I've seen some great plays with it. Just a great card, for sure. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, the inheritable is is okay. It's not anything too great. Just while you have three or fewer security cards, this Digimon gets one thousand plus one thousand DP. Uh, it kind of combos nicely with the War Greymon. War Greymon gets you down to three security pretty easily, and so you just give him a, a little bit of buff because he's only eleven thousand. So getting him up to twelve is is solid. It's a it's a solid idea to do. So this is where it kind of uh, kind of fluctuates a little bit. I am a firm believer that this Angelmon is like the way to go. Okay, and this is. Uh, the wind digivolving effect is okay. It's one of your opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus two until the end of your opponent's next turn. I mean, that's great if they've got, you know, some sort of a beater on field and you just need to slow their beater down a turn or two. And you can go into the Angelomon, kind of like uh, Kentarosmon from uh, way back in 1.0. You know, it would just stun your opponent a little bit. And it's a three Digivolve cost to do that. You know, all right, that's okay. It didn't. We never really saw this Angelomon because of that. You know, there wasn't just too much that we liked, too many good like plays that we could do with it. Uh, but there is now, and that's because this uh, Inheritable Win attacking. If you have three or fewer security cards, you may play one Yellow Digimon level three uh, from your hand without paying its memory cost. So you get to play a free level three any level three no matter what their cost so bushi agumon comes to mind for sure uh salomon with its four digivolve cost uh the pulsemon right getting to play that pulsemon especially if you're at three getting to play that pulsemon for free getting the the draw and the memory oh yeah heck yes so we just got so much great value uh, and we've got one more that we're going to talk about. It, I probably just gave it away just then. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but getting to play level 3 is just amazing. Uh, one yellow level 3, okay? And we just get so much value off this card. I only have it as a 2 of, though. Currently, I might want to run more. It's just it needs to be play tested. And the problem with running more is I have to cut something else. And, uh, and so next two are just kind of your, the, which one do you want to do more? If you have a, a bad, like, rookie rush problem at your locals, you might want to stick with running two Shikakumons. Uh, or if you've, if a purple rookie rush is going to be a big problem at your, your locals, you might want to run the Shikakumon for that, okay? Just being able to, uh, give security attack minus one to anything without Digivolution cards is great. 
Also, with digibursting being a thing now, uh, yeah, Shukakumon is great for getting to stopping. Nothing like a Nidhoggmon coming out and digibursting, right? Pulling all of its sources away, and then it can't attack because it has no digivolution sources, because it can't kill the Shukakumon. Yeah, that's pretty good tech card, honestly. Really liking Shukakumon. I think it's uh, definitely worth a, a look. Uh, what I was doing was two of each of these, and it was working pretty well for me. Uh, but the other option was the Sirenmon. There's plenty of situations where I just felt like I really just wanted a two evolution. Like that the scenario I talked about earlier, where I had five memory, right? And and I wanted to go into my War Greymon. If I had had a two cost uh, level five, then I could have done it. Also, a play cost of five isn't too terrible to get that level five out and then next turn go into like a War Greymon. Solid. I mean, it's a solid play for sure. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to throw that in there just to keep it in mind. All right, next up is the War Greymon. We've covered this. We've talked about him so many times. Uh, this is like the, the meat and potatoes of the deck, really. I mean, this is like your, your tent pole, sort of tent pole piece that you're trying to get into. Uh, just because, one, you get to attack twice, right? You get to return a security instead of trashing it you don't trash the security card you get to add it to hand which is in itself in a way value right you get more resources to your hand that you can use uh he's only a three digivolve cost that's pretty good um you get to uh, like i said you get to uh, basically swing twice so you swing unsuspend itself and then swing again also when you do that unsuspend minus six thousand dp on something of your opponent's that is amazing. That combos so nicely with stuff. Uh, with the War Groundmon, it combos great with the War Groundmon. Uh, with the uh, Patamon from earlier, it combos great with the Patamon. Being able to kill something, 6,000 DP. A lot of things die to minus 6,000 DP. Most level fours and pretty much, I think, all rookies on the most part. I mean, there's a few like weird exceptions. But yeah, so great card. Just phenomenal piece for sure. And I went with Alt Art because that Alt Art is sexy okay it is it is so fire uh 11 000 dp is a little low you got to be careful with that like i said he combos great with the war ground mon for that at least to get him up to 12 just be careful when swinging with this guy i know it feels like yes let's go let's go but he can die okay he can die sort of easily depending on the matchup all right next up uh i've got slash angemon in here slash angemon again great combo piece with this deck he combos great with all this other stuff the war ground on him and a war ground on together that kills a a 12k okay that kills a 12k uh combo is great with just the patamon even if you're just digivolving him without you know comboing him with other stuff minus 8000 is still huge i mean at that point you're kill, clearing all level fours and some level fives uh with the slash angemon here uh, he's just great. He's only a Digivolve cost three, so it's very easy to go into him and still attack with him. You know, that's like the the big thing that Yellow had to used to do. The only way it could clear big stuff was to, uh, if it was suspended, go into a Slash Angemon to reduce it and then swing over it, right? Because minus 8,000, that puts anything in the game, even Omnimon, you know, at least at, at 7,000. So uh, then you could swing over it with the Slash Angemon. Uh, just a great card. He combos great with the deck. I, I love him for sure. I uh, feel no remorse playing him at three. Him and War Greymon together are our level sixes, and I'm totally okay with that. I don't really miss anything else. They, they're they a great Digivolve cost because if TK is on field, you know, that's going to always keep you at three memory. They're, they're just great pieces for sure. All right, next up is Chaos One. Unfortunately, we can't run this one in this deck. Uh, as great of a card as this is, uh, we can't do it. Okay, so... But we can run Valder Arms at two of, which is totally okay because we get to kill big stuff with it or two little things. Uh, if you watched our match from earlier in the week, uh, I got to drop it and kill a Millennium on because uh, my War Greymon swung reduced it because it was the only target I had on field with the War Greymon. And, uh, and then added the, the Valder Arm to hand off the, the War Greymon, right? So Millennium Mon went from 13 to seven uh, I hit into a nail bone with the war Greymon, so they brought back a level four on field probably feeling pretty good about themselves and then I uh, passed my turn by dropping a Valder arm killing the Millennium on and killing the one that they just brought back uh, just he's great you get to kill something big or combo him with other things and kill multiple targets 
well, I mean, he's a powerhouse. Also, on deletion, gain three memory. Yeah, talk about your opponent not wanting to kill your massive 14k beater, right? I mean, how bad does that feel? It's like, oh god, I could kill that thing, but they're gonna get three memory off of it? Ugh, that doesn't, that does not bode well. So yeah, it's just a great deterrent to kill it once it's on field, and then you're just swinging every turn with a 14k. It's solid. Is it phenomenal card? Loving the the Valder arm here. Uh, TK. I mean, memory fixers are so good. Memory fixers are so good. Uh, being able to put you at three memory is is kind of crucial in this deck, honestly. So we've got Slash Angemon, War Greymon here. These are all pretty important things. Uh, Angemon, less so. I mean, once you go into it, it's not like you're you're wanting to do anything. You don't want to attack with it or anything like that. But you know, you can at least get it out and then get something on top of it to set up for future turns, that sort of thing. Uh, but mainly like War Grandmon here, going into the War Grandmon and being able to still Digiburst, because his Digiburst is main, it's not when Digivolving, so kind of important to be able to still use this effect when you Digivolve into him without passing your turn. So uh, again, three memory cost uh, evolutions are fairly abundant, and they're so like crucial that you really need to be at three memory as much as possible. Also, just being able to get the, the track or the uh, security getting what's dead in security out of security like glorious burst or something important that you need like oh, I'm missing a level four I'm missing a level five I can't draw into them oh I got a TK here let me go grab exactly what I need out of out of my security uh, he's a must if I could fit three in here I would I, I probably would I mean I could maybe cut down my level four package my level fours are maxed out here um, I've got the full 12. I could maybe cut Turuimon or the Unimon down by one and fit in another TK. That is certainly possible. Uh, next up is Glorious Burst. Some people aren't running it. I think it's just too good of a card. Uh, yellow needs their removal. Sure, we've got these combos of removal we can do, but it really feels bad that I have to play multiple cards to clear one single vanilla level 6 off field. You know, that just feels so bad. Or there's just tons of tons of level sixes out there that are all 12k or less, and I don't I hate having to do all these different combinations because nothing else is big enough to kill it. Um, Glorious burst is just a nice. I mean, I just have it in here as a two up. I think he's a solid two up. Uh, you're not going to really reduce it much. You only got the two TKs here, so at best it's going to be seven. Generally, it might be eight. Uh, it does combo with the Patamon though, so you can get some value back with the Patamon in combination with Glorious Burst. He's just, it's too good of a card, too good of a removal to, to use. Uh, or like say you attack with War Greymon, or you go into a War Groundmon and reduce something big like an Omnimon down to 11, you know, or you know anything like that. Valder Arms, whatever you're playing against, reduce that big thing down with uh, the War Groundmon and then pass your turn with a Glorious Burst to kill it. It can combo for the even bigger stuff, uh, but in general, he's, it's a great removal. I have it as a two of. More than that feels a bit too much. It is a huge cost to play this, but it is needed because there's too many big things out there that this deck can struggle to get off field potentially. So, uh, and that's this is our answer to that stuff that's too big. All right, and the last card we have Blinding Ray. Wow, yeah, this card is good. Uh, zero cost. I mean, to gain two memory, you add. Uh, you have to trash. Unfortunately, if you could add that secu the security to hand, like War Greymon, oh my goodness, this thing would be absolutely busted. Uh, but you do trash it. But hey, you gain two memory for that. You can do a lot with two memory. I mean, look at um, blue players. They they do so much with Hammer Spark. A like, just one single memory, right? To get a whole card to get one memory, and that thing puts in ridiculous work uh, no security effect though keep that in mind so if you want to maximize out on this be cautious because you're not gonna get any security value out of this they're gonna hit into this it's gonna go straight to the trash and they got a free security check off of it uh, sure you can fetch it out with TK uh, but that's if you get the TK to hand fast enough to pull it out of there before it gets hit also keep in mind you are trashing your security to gain this to memory you can't play a whole bunch of these, okay? You, you just can't. You can't play a whole bunch of these and also expect to get your value out of War Greymon, okay? So trashing your security, adding it to hand, whatever, you can only do so much of that in this. You only have so much recursion 
as well, right? We have the Salamons for a little bit of recovery. We're not playing the the, the Patamon for the recovery, right? We're not playing the Angelomon that gives us recovery, okay? So be cautious. When you do play cards like this, you know, you have to... This deck is very much a play fast, win fast. But in combination with that, decks that are play fast, win fast are also lose fast, potentially. You're going to run out of... You're going to clear your own security for your opponent, and they're just going to be able to win easy okay so be cautious when playing this i only have it as a three of because i don't need to go more than that okay i only want to see this card once maybe twice in a game i don't want to see it more than that uh not in combination with uh, the war Greymon that i absolutely will be going to like you cannot i don't think you can win in this deck without going into at least a level six it, you're you're just realistically not winning with only your level fours level fives and rookies okay most decks operate that way so just keep that in mind. It's very important to get into this War Greymon, okay? And it's very important to probably use his effect to reduce DP on stuff and attack twice with it. That's a pretty important thing. So don't go too overboard on the blinding lights or blinding rays. Okay, so as I was editing this, I completely forgot to mention this. Lucy Mon, Lucy Mon combos, great, phenomenal with the Angelomon. Being able to play this guy for free, a 13 cost rookie that you get to play for free. I mean, that already sounds like pretty remarkable and just insane, but also on play, you get your recovery plus one uh, is is awesome. I mean, Yellow loves to recover, and so getting this, and this deck has so much where it's you're losing so much security due to your own effects, that having options like this that get you that back. This, in combination with the Salomon, is how we're getting our recovery back, and being able to play this guy for free is is just really great. Uh, also, late game, he's pretty solid because minus eight on uh, the play cost down to a five. A, a play cost of five for recovery is is amazing. Magna Angemon beats Magna Angemon at that point uh, in play cost for the same effect. Also, just a 10k body on field. Just, just body the crap out of everyone because you're 10k. It's just really good yes it's a rookie i mean if you don't want to think of it as a rookie i mean he's still really good a just a five cost 10k recovery plus one digimon that in itself is great now it, you can't digivolve on top of him because there isn't anything that exists that can yet but still just by himself he's just really great it just keeps swinging him into clearing your opponent's stuff or clearing uh security definitely makes me think we want to rethink my Angelomon numbers if maybe I should play more of them because uh, we got the Lucymon, the Bushi Agumon, right? We have all this like nice on play stuff. The uh, the Pulse Mons. We have lots of rookies that we do not mind hard playing from hand because there's just so much value in getting a free these guys in particular for free onto the field. But to add him into the deck, we do have to take other things out. I think he's solid at two of just because that makes sure you're going to see it every game. But at that point, you got to find where to cut. Um, Blinding Ray is a potential to cut just down to two because, like I talked about, you don't want to overuse it. Uh, you only want to use it so much. But at a two, I don't think you're going to see it enough. So it, that could be a problem, only cutting it cutting it down to two from the three. But it is a possibility. Uh, looking at other things we could potentially cut, we could cut our level fours down, like we talked about earlier. We could cut these down to 11 and that's that'd be a pretty solid number at that point cutting these down and that would give us our two slots uh i don't really recommend cutting level fives less than eight uh, especially if you've got seven level sixes that you need to digivolve onto i mean already the the seven is is pushing it you might could cut the slash angemon down slash angemon down to two and the terurimon or the unimon down uh to three and that's gonna fit your lucimon in there pretty comfortably uh and that's gonna be the deck uh let me know what you guys think this thing is nuts i've enjoyed playing with it so far it just everything about it feels so good it feels so powerful we have so much control and it's just it's nice because we can control every single turn whereas in shine you could only control every so often drop the shine every so often and it took a whole lot of buildup this is like the same amount of removal but spread out over the entire game instead of just these like chunks of of the game where you just do a whole bunch at once because that could be good or bad you know you might not get that much value out of it but this just constantly every turn just removing stuff off your opponent's field 
and uh, and getting Patamon to just trigger left and right because of it. Yeah, Patamon. MVP. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment uh, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoy this type of content, I try to put it out as much as possible. So definitely subscribe. Also, if you really enjoyed the content, check out my uh, Patreon. I have a link in the description below for it. You can get access to my Discord server as well as your, if you're a Dragon Village M fan, account takeovers where I help you out with your account. If you're a Digimon fan, I've got monthly giveaway. Well, not even giveaways. I've got monthly merch that's specific to Patreon. Stuff like memory counters custom made this is the uh, the baby form of vmon here there's gonna be more in the works also so lots of memory counters all kinds of awesome digimon merch so definitely check out that tier and if you're just all out crazy there's other tiers if you're that dedicated uh, as well as check out my teespring i've got awesome merch there you know official battle ready ink merch awesome phone cases for you digimon fans out there uh they've got them for iphones as well as uh samsung's so they are super sweet if you've seen the the last digimon movie that's where these are from i had a friend of mine custom make these so that way they fit perfectly on these phone cases they look super good so definitely check those out but at the end of the day if you can't do any of that just like i said like the video that helps a ton and subscribe it doesn't hurt but it helps me so that's what's the, the real benefit. And as always, I'll see you next time.